us worship the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. You deserve all the glory, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you glory. We give you praise. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Jesus, we kindle the fire, Lord. Oh, once again, consuming fire, sweet perfume. Your awesome presence fills this room. Consuming fire.
Please. 
Let's praise the Lord, everybody. Let's praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Now we just sing, I'll bless the Lord, oh my soul. When we offer our praises to the Lord, remember that when he's giving back to us, he not only blesses us, but he also blesses the people in our family, blesses our friends, bless the neighbors, and some of the people that give in your problem, we also bless them too. So sometimes we have to remember that we're standing in the gap for somebody. And my praise, the rewards of my praise, it just don't come to me. But it also affects everybody around me. So when we sing, I will bless the Lord, I don't know what's going to happen this week, but God going to bless me and I'm going to bless the people around me. Whether they like me or not. Can anybody agree with that? Has anything happened to you when you pray, you go down on your knee, you hit knee city, and when God go for walk through and bless him, bless everybody, everybody around you, and sometimes you're being a blessing to somebody, but we have to restock so that tomorrow when I go out, I don't know if I go see a man and minister to him and then he go and get the Holy Ghost down in the week. But if I bless the Lord with all my soul and everything that is within me, bless his holy name, God will be a letter to nobody. Does anybody believe that this morning? Has God been a letter to any one of you? He's one of the best paying persons I know. Sometimes he'll give you a bonus, triple time, 10 times, 15, 20 times. So when we really come here, I will say, we're going to bless the Lord, please. May I beg you? Bless the Lord with all your soul. Bless the Lord with everything I have in you. You're not must live to see tomorrow. I've heard many stories of people say, oh yeah, may I come to church tomorrow? And, and church people come and they say, oh yes, you know, when I come to church, Tomorrow and then we jump off the next day. Cut off. But I am still alive and it's almost year end. I don't know. As you blink two more times, the year done and welcome 2024. I'm still alive and you are still alive. So let's bless the Lord with everything that's within us. At least close out the year blessing the Lord because I live to see the year end. Can everybody just shout a hallelujah after two? One, two. After two, 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 one, two. Let's praise the Lord. 
Our theme for today is Position to Reap. Position to reap. Reap what? The harvest. The harvest of soul, the harvest of blessings, whatever it is, whatever God has to in stored in the fields for me. So I'm positioning myself to reap. Praise the Lord. And at this time, we're going to ask Sister Erica. Please come and open us in prayer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you have a need, you can come to the altar this morning. If you have a need, praise the Lord Jesus. If you have a need, if you need prayer, we need prayer for healing, for deliverance, for strength. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We are going to be praying. And for those who don't have a need at this time, we're going to be praying for those who are here at the altar. We're going to be praying for the shutins. We're going to pray for our elders. We're going to be praying for our community. Praying for our unsaved family members, our neighbors. We're going to be standing the gap for them all. We are all going to be praying at this time. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you honor and glory because you deserve it, Jesus. It's nothing good that we have done. But God, you gave us one more chance of life. Lord Jesus, thank you for the sunshine this morning. Oh God, thank you that we are able to see. So many of us can't see. So many can't walk. So many can't talk. So many can't hear. But Lord Jesus, we thank you, oh God, that we have all our faculties, oh God, and all our members together, Jesus. So that's why we come into your presence, oh God, to worship you in the beauty of holiness. Lord Jesus, whatever it is, oh God, that we're, we have come to the altar for, I pray in the name of Jesus that you, oh God, may grant, oh God, our request, oh God. If it's in your will, let it be done. Lord Jesus, for those who have come for healing, I pray, God, you'll heal the woman with the issue of blood, and you can heal somebody this morning. Whatever it is, Lord Jesus, you can heal. Not only, oh God, the sicknesses, but the our heart, oh God, our minds, oh God. Lord Jesus, I pray in the name of Jesus. So many, oh God, are bereaved this morning. So many, oh God, have lost a family member, a friend, a co-worker, oh God, a neighbor. So many, oh God, so many are mourning. But God, I pray that you comfort the hearts of your people and provide for them, Jesus. Lord God, we are praying, oh God, for elders, our shutins, oh God, who are unable to come to church this morning, but God, you know, oh God, that they will, will want to come, but God, because of sicknesses, oh God, they are unable to move. So Lord Jesus, we pray for them. I pray that God, you minister to their heart. I pray in the name of Jesus that you cover them, that you provide for them. Let them not be in any needs or any wants. But Lord God, I pray that you provide for them all their necessaries, oh God. We are praying in the name of Jesus that you cover each person that come to the altar, the children, oh God. You know them by name. You know all of us by name and nature, Jesus, because you created us. And you know God. You said you're touched with the feelings of our infirmities. So Lord Jesus, this morning, I pray that you may touch us collectively, oh God, and individually, oh God. We may come here, oh God, with all sorts of things in our mind, all sorts of burdens, oh God. Lord Jesus, somebody may be on the verge of giving up, oh God, but Lord Jesus, they're in the right place at the right time because you, God, you are a way maker, you are a provider, you are our deliverer, oh God, and you can do the impossible, oh God. So this morning, I pray that, God, we may not go the same way we came in, but, Lord, we may get our word, mighty God. We may get something to smile about, Jesus. We may, oh, God, worship you, God, because when the praises go up, the blessing will surely come down. 
And Lord Jesus, we are reaping it. We are reaping soul. We are reaping our blessings. Oh God, we are reaping victory in the name of Jesus. I believe it and I pray that we may have faith that we believe it also, God. So Lord, I pray that you come by here, oh God, and have your way, oh God. It's not our will, but your will be done. So Lord Jesus, we know we are up against opposition. Oh God, we are up against the wise of the enemy. But God, we are not going to fear because you are our God and you are big enough, Jesus. You are bigger than our problems. You are bigger than our, all our cares. So Lord God, this morning, I pray that God, we may worship you in the beauty of holiness, oh God. Even now, have your way now in the name which is above every name. And we say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, praise God. At this time, we'll have our welcome by Sister Zoe Thomas. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. God is good. I'm just happy that we are all here and we're all here safely. Praise the Lord Jesus. So as Tina Shea mentioned earlier, our theme is positioned to reap. Praise the Lord Jesus. And as she said, yes, we're positioning ourselves to reap whatever our harvest is, whatever it's season that we are in. And I just pray that you are in your position because if you're not specifically where you're supposed to be, the Lord cannot use you. Amen? Amen. So I just want to welcome everyone to our youth Sunday service this morning. It's really good to see all the faces. Praise the Lord. Welcome to you all persons who was your first, second, third, tenth time being here. Welcome for our young people. Welcome. Glad to see you all. And for all the persons, I'm glad that you're in the house of the Lord and leading and lighting the path for us as young people. Praise the Lord Jesus. So we're just going to go around and greet each other and welcome each other to service. Praise the Lord. I'm glad to be God's servants. I'm glad to be God's servants. Yes, I'm glad to be God's servants one more time. He didn't have to make me live. He didn't have to make me live. But I'm glad to be God's servants one more time. I'm glad to be God's servants. I'm glad to be God's servants. Yes, I'm glad to be God's servants one more time. He didn't have to make me live. He didn't have to make me live. But I'm glad to be God's servants one more time. I'm glad to be God's servants. Oh, I'm glad to be God's servants. Cause I'm glad to be God's servants one more time. He didn't have to make me live. Didn't have to make me live. But I'm glad to be God's servants one more time. Oh, one more time. One more time. One 
what you came to do, but I came to pray. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's praise the Lord, everybody. Let's praise the Lord, everybody. Are you happy to be in God's service one more time? Are you happy to be in God's service one more time? Praise the Lord. At this time, we'll be having our youth committee. They will be coming to read a variation of scriptures. Could you please stand for the reading of God's holy word? Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. So we're just going to be reading a portion of scriptures. So our first scripture is Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5, and it reads thus, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. 1 Samuel 16, verses 12, praise the Lord, it says, and the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the, the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. First Peter 2 verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an only nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you, out of darkness into his marvelous light. And reading Ephesians 2 verse 10, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. Praise the Lord. Everyone, we pray that you will stay in your positions and be ready to reap at any time. God Hallelujah. bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise the Lord, praise Him. I thank Him for joy and peace divine. Oh yes, when I was sad and lonely and I didn't know what to do, I just thank Him for saving my soul. Oh yes, let's praise the Lord, praise Him, praise the Lord. For joy and peace divine, oh yes. When I was sad and lonely and I didn't know what to do, I just thank Him for saving my soul.
At this time, we'll be having three testimonies, three short testimonies from Brother David, Brother Marcella, and Brother Nation. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord one more time. And praise the Lord another time. You know, God has been so good to me. And uh, I wouldn't have been here if it wasn't for him. I know that for a fact. It's just that it's so crazy how God has loved me so much. Even because of my past, especially. And uh, I won't go into that, but... <laughs> I just want to know that. I just want you guys to know that God has delivered me from that. And uh, it has been a struggle, especially even it, it's not easy. I'm not going to tell you that the road has been easy since God has set me free from my troubles. But it is a, a hard road. It's a very hard road. And God has, uh, God has just been working, working, working on me even though i've made mistakes over and over again god has still been working on me and i i've seen improvement i've seen where i've seen a lot of things god has just uh, just shown me so many flaws about myself even things that i don't even know sisters and brothers and uh, i'm just here to encourage you in the lord because especially in these last days you can't afford to slip up and you can't afford the enemy to just because you make one mistake, I've learned like just recently about myself. I give up easily. But, but you know, it's just that you can't allow one mistake to bring you down or to hold you down in captives. Because the enemy will use that as an opportunity, an advantage to destroy your life. And to make you go in depression and further pull you down. So I'm encouraging you. Because it's not easy, but, you know, trust in him. Keep on fasting, praying. Pray for your brothers and your sisters. And uh, don't stop praying because don't think that God isn't going to answer your prayers. And I'm just glad to be in God's service one more time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Um, you know what? Just want to thank the Lord for life and for doing marvelous things for me. Um, you know, as I don't know if everyone knows, um, I play football for my high school, so and I was training during the summertime, and you know this football season is coming near. So everyone was training and training very good, but at that time I wasn't playing as good as, as I should. So I was fretting and fretting if I was going to make the cut or even to be on the starting team. You know, I was there fretting, 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 and I was like. I need, I need to start, God. Please let me start. I have to even make the cut. And you know, it was when? It was on the first month. It was on a Monday. And I prayed, I prayed the Sunday at church. Because I want, I want to make the starting team. And you know, when we went to the match, I wasn't going to start. But God, the court said, Cello, you have to go there and do it. And I breathed in, I, go, I went out there and I did it. Yeah. And from, from that, I, I didn't come out the starting team. So I just wanted to thank the Lord for that. Really. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord one more time. God has done so much for me through, the, through every week, Lord. Jesus. God has done so much for me. I could have been dead. I have been dead every week, but God, but God. So I just want to thank the Lord for everything that He has done for me. Okay. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. No matter what storm clouds may rock. This ship of mine, yes, the light of my, my Savior, Savior will lead me safely.
everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. All right, so our announcements are as follows. This afternoon, or this evening rather, we'll be having our prayer meeting and evangelistic service here in the sanctuary at 5.30 p.m. All right, so then on Tuesday, we have our usual WhatsApp prayer meeting, our weekly WhatsApp prayer meeting at 6.30 p.m. Again, for those of our members and also visitors, if you're another part of the group and you want to be a part of our prayer meetings, 
You can speak to any of our leaders and we will arrange for you to be a part. Amen? And on Wednesday, we have our usual 9 a.m. to midday prayer meeting and fasting service here in the sanctuary. Oh, we'll be having a regional prayer meeting and fasting service this Wednesday at Bog Walk. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, if you would like to go out and support, amen, just speak to our prayer coordinator, Sister Malcolm, Sister Paulette Malcolm, and the arrangements will be made. All right. Then at 7 p.m., 7 p.m. on Wednesday, we'll join here in the sanctuary for prayer meeting and Bible study. Then we move right along into next week's Sunday, if the Lord shall spare our lives. At 6 a.m., we have the national radio program that is aired on Fame 95 FM that is under the theme, Rightly Dividing the Word. Anybody heard it this morning? Amen, 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 amen. So when you wake up in the morning, just turn on the radio and go to Fame 95 FM. And you will hear it at 6 a.m. Praise the Lord. Then, uh, then at 7, p 7 a.m., rather, <laughs> 7 a.m., we join here in the center for prayer meeting. Sunday school is at 8. And great Sunday school, bills. Amen. And if anybody wants to see a great church being built just from Sunday school, you're in the right place. We started from an extension Sunday school, and the Lord has brought us here 20 or 30 plus years. Amen. And so we are here to live and to breathe and to speak the name of Jesus in this community. Amen. Amen. All right. Then after Sunday school at 8, we have our worship service at 9.15 a.m. Praise the Lord. Amen. So normally we... Thank the Lord for allowing us to be able to record and live stream our services so that we can go home and re-watch them and we can share them with persons outside of the faith and persons all around the globe. Amen. We thank the Lord for the resources. You know, he has blessed us severely. Amen. So, there is one way, just like how there is one way to Jesus, there is one way to share there's one way to share the channel. Go on YouTube, type in Pentecostal Lighthouse UPC in a search bar. You will see our YouTube channel with all of our videos, our services, and our Bible studies, and all of those wonderful events that we have. They are all on our YouTube channel. So while you are there, we encourage you to visit, subscribe, like, and share. We encourage you to be a vessel. A vessel of Jesus. A vessel of honor. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right. Persons are encouraged to continue making donations toward the construction of the sanctuary at 11 King Street. Donations should be separated from regular tithes and offerings, and the envelope should be labeled the King Street Project. Checks should be made payable to Pentecostal Lighthouse. For direct transfers, please contact us for banking information. Amen. And if you are wondering, how do I get in contact with you? Well, you may contact us by sending us an email to pentlightupc at gmail.com or you might send us a WhatsApp message or call us. Our phone number is 876-781-9606. And I'm looking over at Brother Adrian because he knows it by heart. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So if you want to be a part of our services, if you want to speak with the minister, or if you want to arrange a personal Bible study, baptism in the name of Jesus, baby dedications, counseling, marriages, funerals, all of those wonderful events, you may contact us either by sending us an email or calling us or sending us a WhatsApp message. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining us for worship this morning. And the Lord Jesus Christ, indeed, richly bless you.
First of all, everybody, amen. At this time, we'll have our first team ministering in song. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Could you all please stand? Once you're able to stand, could you all please stand? At this time, it's my happy privilege to invite the one just chosen by the Lord to come and minister to us. Father Steve and then the Holy Ghost. Could we just shout the name of Jesus as he comes after two? One, two, Jesus! Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise team, I'm going to ask you to just come and sing that song about two more times. That's the part with Jesus. Hallelujah. How many love the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just sing it about two more times. Jesus. Yes. Give me some strings on the keyboard. And I want all of us to sing with the praise team. We're going to sing Jesus about two more times. We're just singing the name. We don't have to know the song. It's just Jesus. And that's all we'll be singing in heaven. That's all we'll be singing in heaven. In churches, we don't always have a scream with the words. All we're singing is Jesus. Anybody love Jesus? Anybody have the Holy Ghost? All right, those who have the Holy Ghost and you know you love Jesus. Jesus just sing it as one big choir. Come Jesus, on. Jesus. for the work that you have started in Bucktown, Jesus. Though, O oh God, we have not given you what you deserve, and we are like gods in your house this morning, Lord Jesus. 
we decide that we're not going to worship you, God. But God, if it is even to worship us, Lord, I pray you will touch your people, God, that their hearts will be open to receive your word and that they'll be open to repent of their ways, that they will worship you in spirit and in truth, God. Touch from the singers to the musicians, touch the ushers and every child, every woman, every boy, every girl. God, we pray, God, that you will touch them in the name of Jesus. Let every demonic force that is holding down our hands and holding down our mouths and holding down our minds, we pray that they will flee seven different ways in the name of Jesus. Lord God, free this atmosphere. God, shake the powers of darkness and cause the stubborn spirits to submit to God. Lord Jesus, we are not come here, God, to pass the time and to say church was good. God, we come to hear a word and we come to break the powers of darkness. Jesus, we pray that you will send help from heaven. We bind the prince of Bucktown. We bind the prince of Ensom. We bind the prince of Elsom. We bind the prince of the power of the ear. God, that is stopping our prayers. Mighty God. We intercede on behalf of this congregation as Daniel stood up to you for the backslidden Israel. So I stand God as an intercessor on the altar of consecration. God, that you will touch your people. Jesus, we pray God that there will be a shift in the spirit that there will be demonic shackles that are broken Lord Jesus lose the atmosphere lose lose God Hallelujah we pray that your word will not return unto your void we pray somebody will speak with other tongues before the day is over. God, we pray that somebody will be baptized in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. We bless the name of the Lord. We bless the name of the Lord. Can we bless the name of the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Can we bless the name of the Lord? Musicians, play. Play, we're gonna chase the devil. Come, play. Like, can we bless the Lord? 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 Bless the Lord, Jesus. Bless the Lord. 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 Bless the Lord.
one thing is sure is that God is going to get his glory and God is going to speak to his people and if you don't want to be a part of it that is up to you but God is going to get the glory God God is going to get the glory God must get the glory God must get the glory God must get the glory we are not gods and idols in the house of God God is going to get his glory and he can't do it without you and he can't do it without me there's a holy presence of God if you don't want to grab your blessing and your deliverance, you can shut your mouth. But God wants to deliver somebody. God is going to get the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We turn our Bibles this morning. We turn our Bibles this morning to Romans chapter 10. Hallelujah. 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 Brethren, God doesn't need a crow to work. If, if those of you who are are able to turn your Bibles if you're not worshiping. If you're worshiping, don't let me stop you. My God, I feel to call the name of Jesus some more times. Jesus. 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 We give you all the glory, Lord. We give you all the praise. There's a word for us. But God has to work on the hearts of the people. I am only the messenger. God is the one that convicts the hearts. And if our hearts are stubborn, we will not receive the word. God wants to break the stony hearts. God wants to break the stony hearts. <laughs> oh Lord, have your way in this service. God, we pray that you bind every deaf and dumb spirit. Alabosha. Bind every deaf and dumb spirit. 
bind every foul spirit out of hell and may your people give you glory may they worship you with everything Lord God we lay before you we are nothing before you God your word will stand forever we will die and go but your word your spirit God you have been so good to us Jesus we love you Jesus we exalt you Musicians. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you for ministering unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Going to get to the scripture, there's a word to be spoken. I will not be long. The altar call needs to start ASAP. We need to make an altar call. We need to make an altar call as quickly as we can. But this word came to me while we praise the Lord. 58 Nugent Street was not a mistake. It was in the plan of God from before we were born. And God is going to get his glory out of this place until the rapture comes. He will do it with me and he will do it without me. But if we decide that we don't want to be a part of the move of God, God is going to bring out some prostitutes. He's going to bring in some gang members and he's going to turn them into altar workers. He's going to turn them into worshipers. I've seen God replace this whole choir with people who could not sing and the Holy Ghost taught them to sing. 
58 New Gen Street is not an afterthought. It's not a mistake. And it was not an idea by Minister Manning or Pastor Leng. This place is ordained by God and will be kept by God. No weapon formed against this place shall prosper. And every warrior that stands to fight the forces in this community, God will give you strength. God will lift up your hands. God will speak to you. God will work out your problems. God will keep your salvation for your salvation at this very altar was not a mistake. God is going to get the glory and there will be testimonies of this ghetto, of this slum, of this place of darkness that people gave upon. We will be able to tell Peter and Paul and John about this place when we get to heaven. This place will not be rendered void. God is going to get his glory from this board building. We read this morning from the book of Romans chapter 10. We read from verse 9 and verse 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Go quickly over to the book of John chapter 1 verse 1 and verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Read verse 14. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You may be seated. We praise the Lord. My topic is does confession match belief? A lot of people say that they believe a lot of things. I'm sure if we ask a lot of people here, if they believe in God, they will say that yes, I believe in God. But Paul said to the church in Rome, that you have to confess with your mouth but you must believe with your heart as well if I say that I believe that an earthquake is gonna come and I don't secure my house then I really never believe if I say that a hurricane is coming and my house does not have food if I don't go to the supermarket I did not believe but God is asking the church does my confession match what I say I believe? In Acts 11 verse 26, the Bible says, And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves in the church and taught much people. And the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. I want to say this morning, by the help of the Lord that the, the, the title the, the first time the name Christian was mentioned in the Bible Paul did not walk around and say that I am a Christian it was a title given to them because of the radiating power of the Holy Ghost 
I want to say this morning by the power of the Lord that signs we don't run down signs. We hear that our prophet is down the road and our deliverance service is down the road and we go from church to church trying to feel God. But when you believe with your heart and you confess that Jesus is Lord, you don't follow signs. Signs follow you. Many people run down the title and say I am a Christian and I am a believer. When you live in the doctrine of Christ that title is given to you. You don't claim it on yourself because the glory of God is shining in you. There are a lot of churches these days, a lot of pastors, a lot of apostles, but conversion numbers are down. That much not adding up. The more power in the church is the more people should be falling on their face, walking out of sin and receiving the Holy Ghost. But we have more titles and less converts. That is not the church that Jesus died for. Now if we look at the history of Antioch briefly, it was a city of a great ruler. This place was a place of idol worship. They used to worship Adonis and Apollo and those gods used to have people strip themselves and burn their babies and they had a lot of riches and money and trade and commerce and one of the greatest emperors ruled at that time but up to this day there are Christian settlements in Antioch because a few disciples decided to let God have the glory they believed but they didn't only say that they believe the power that radiated from their lives got them titles that up to this day Christians are worshipping God in the city of Antioch now I want to look at Romans 10 before Paul says in verse 5 that Moses well he says for Christ is the end of the law Verse 6, he says, But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on the wise. Say not in thine heart, Who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend to, into the deep to bring up Christ from the dead? You see, in the church of Rome, there were a lot of people who were Judaizers. They were preaching Judaism that they had to obey the law. And so the Jews were used to Moses going up to Mount Sinai and coming down back with a word. But Paul was saying, all you have to do now is believe. You don't have to say, will God send a man to go up to Sinai because Christ already he went into the upper room and died by on a cross suffering the shame and is now manifest in front of us I want you to know brothers and sisters that in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God that same word became flesh the word that a church would be here the church needs to start becoming flesh It's not just a word that Bucktown has an apostolic church. It's not just a word that we come over from Wildman Street. It's not just a word that we have had great leaders. It's not just a word that we have bright people. But there needs to be a manifestation of that word. When the word is manifest, we don't need to beg people to come to church. When the word is manifest, we don't beg people to come to the altar. When the word is manifest, we do not beg people to surrender to God. Because when the word became flesh, people left droves from their cities to see Jesus. And this same Jesus. This same Jesus 
is the one inside of us. And this same Jesus is going to rise us on the final day. And so, Paul in Romans 10, when he was saying, Who shall ascend or who shall descend? It's ironic because he's quoting Sister Dixon from Deuteronomy chapter 30. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A lot of people use this verse to say that you need to say a sinner's prayer and you'll be saved. I always tell my students in Sunday school that when you're going to approach a passage, you must have three things. CDA, the context, the discourse, and the application. If you take a scripture in isolation, you run the risk of false doctrine. So he's quoting from Deuteronomy 30, which the Jews would have been familiar with. Amen. And they said the same thing when the promise came that they would go to a land and they would possess it and God would be with them. They said the same thing. Who would go up for us or will come down? And although Moses was there, he said it is God himself who is going to manifest himself and he's going to bring you across. But it's funny how Paul brought that scripture back, Sister Jody. Hallelujah. Talking about the promised land. But he spoke about it again in Romans chapter 10. In terms of the promised Holy Ghost. God is asking. Do we really believe? Our confession needs to match our belief. If we are going to be in a position to reap souls, our confession must reflect our belief. As I bring this little exhortation to a close, church has become a stressful place nowadays. When you come to a church, what is a feature of churches now, Sister Jody, is the moderator cussing off people as to why they are not worshiping. A couple of years ago, the pastor would have to say, without the music and stop young people, please, may I beg you, stop, I want to preach. But now if they lift their hand one time, they give God thanks. But church has become stressful because we really don't believe. People come to church when it's time for preaching, it's not time, Sister Jody. When it's time for altar call, people are leaving. This is probably one of the better places where we'll stay and pray with people. Generally, people are gone to cook their Sunday dinner to prepare for the next day to make more money. The youngsters want the tightest skirt and the newest fashion. And they want to see how cute they can look when the boys see them on the road. Nine and ten year olds don't know the story of Noah and Noah and the ark. They don't know the story of Joseph. They don't know how many tribes of Israel. They don't know the story of Jesus turning water into wine. But they can do the last and the latest dance on TikTok. The fear of God has gone out that door. In this time of demonic oppression and satanic rule, we cannot be just church people. We have to be carriers of the glory. You 
skirt and your long sleeve don't scare demons your shirt and your tie don't scare devils of course you should be modestly dressed according to the holy scriptures but there's more to the relationship with God than just coming to church and smelling and looking nice our conventions have become fashion shows and parading of titles and who is bishop and who is superintendent we are running down titles we are running down the latest suit because it's all about me but if we believe uh, when we confess the Lord uh, you will see Jesus uh, and him crucified and I leave you with this thought the Bible says in 1 John 4 that we must try the spirit not every spirit is of God any spirit that confesses not that Jesus is come in the flesh is antichrist now we confess with our mouth a lot that Jesus is Lord Jesus is Lord but your actions speak louder than your words if your actions don't confess uh, that Jesus is in this vessel, you are really not a believer. You are an unbeliever. And the Bible says, uh, all unbelievers uh, and all liars uh, shall have their part uh, in the lake of fire, which burneth with fire and brimstone. You think unbelievers are only those walking up and down in their short shorts? You have unbelievers sitting right here. Those who are unsaved, a lot of times you witness the people and they say they believe in God, but they're still living in sin. You cannot believe in God and live in sin. You're lying to yourself. Your belief must be backed up by your actions. Oh Lord. I want to call the altar call. But I just want to implore somebody to really take stock if you are a believer. The Bible said in John 16 that the Holy Ghost does three things. He shows you that you have sinned. He teaches you righteousness. And he reminds you of hellfire. If the Holy Ghost is active in the church. If the Holy Ghost is active in your life. Sin cannot be repeated and you do not feel away. There are a lot of church goers uh, who are the dirtiest of sinners uh, because the Holy Ghost uh, is dead. You think God didn't know that we're going to cut out the light last night? You think God didn't know that you're going to lose your mother? God knows all of that. That's why he gave you the Holy Ghost which is the comforter. Is the Holy Ghost active in my life? Is the Holy Ghost active in your life? It's not about church coming and make Sister Dixon see you, say you're there. It is about a gut wrenching, soul searching, Holy Ghost conviction. Could it be like Saul? We are offering sacrifices for 30 years. And God said, me done with him. 
everybody can lift their hand everybody can open their mouth but God knows the heart if you're a believer it's progressive sister Jody first you fake it you lift your hands because you don't want sister Len come over and rebuke you and say you're dead so you fake it fake all tongues too but let me tell you something the Holy Ghost has a character so eventually you are fake and you are fake it when the Holy Ghost not dead eventually you are not stuck up because your flesh going to get tired the tongues going to stop because it's God make the mouth and the mouth going to shut you're yeah, just standing up and spinning around two times. It's going to stop because God has found it to be a faker. And it's God make the spine and it's God make the foot them. Because you're in your flesh. God has going to desert you. Not even a shake you can feel. Does my confession match what I believe? Want to call an altar call for those who have not yet received the Holy Ghost. Without the Holy Ghost, you'll not be able to live above sin. Those who have not yet spoken with other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance, because you have a lot of tongue speaking classes now where they're teaching people to speak with other tongues that is of the devil when it is not God giving the utterance we know when it's God giving the utterance because the same spirit in us is going to put it in you my God I came here to preach about confession but I don't know why I'm lingering on tongues tongues are a sign to them that believe not so when you don't believe and you say God I want help God will fill you with the Holy Ghost and you will speak with other tongues it is God that gives the sign not man after two and three speak after me that is the devil The Holy Ghost is a gift of God. Repentance is not the preacher making you feel guilty. It is a conviction of God. Anyone here you don't have the Holy Ghost. This altar is open. And those of us who have the Holy Ghost. But have been sleeping. And I've decided to fake it so that our leaders don't get disappointed. I thought you loved the Lord. If you loved the Lord, you wouldn't want to disappoint him first. Leaders come down the line. God is so mad with some of us. We are such fakers and profilers. But God is going to remove you. When I got the call to preach, I was under a lot of stress, secularly. And I said, God, surely you have another man that's probably more holy and probably knows the Bible more or probably more anointed than me. And sister Zoe said, no, man, it's just you when I pray, I get in you. And when I get to prayer, God say, yeah, man, it's you. I said, but I don't, I don't have any word, Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah and as I prayed in the wee hours of the morning I got really sick my belly 
running belly everything that hasn't happened to me for a very long time I know the enemy was on me and I, when I see those things I rejoice because I know God had a word for his people and God anointed me for this moment I am probably better than me to preach the word but God is saying at 58 there are so many fakers and profilers the Holy Ghost is walking through the aisles and he's discerning your spirit if you know that you are a faker and your relationship with God is only based on what the length of the skirt and how much you come to church God is asking you to recommit because there's a wave of revival that is going to break through Bucktown and he's preparing his people he's not mad hallelujah that you're struggling he's mad that you're struggling and you're comfortable come to these altars men on my left girls on my right come to this altar those who want to come and pray come to this altar those who want to pray come to this altar God sent an earthquake and some of us are still so stubborn Those who want to pray, come to this altar. Those who have not yet received the Holy Ghost, altar workers, come and pray with them. God is calling those who are asleep to wake up. Come on, people of God. Jesus is calling somebody to make the word manifest. Hallelujah. God bless you. time to reflect and to think about where we are think about your personal relationship with God think about if God is pleased with you if you think you're falling short it's nothing to be ashamed of but you need to repent cannot just stay where you are comfortable and God is not happy.
Brethren, the Lord has truly spoken to us this morning. Brother Stephen said that, I said that when I was praying that it came to me that he was supposed to speak. But brethren, I wasn't even thinking about the service. I was in my bathroom brushing my teeth and I heard it so clearly. The Lord said, I have something to say and I'm going to use Brother Stephen to say it. I did not tell Stephen, Brother Stephen the theme. I didn't give him any hints. I just said, I know that there's something that the Lord wants to say. So I don't take it for granted the message that has come to the church this morning. Jesus. Brethren, we need to take stock of ourselves. We need to measure ourselves. Jesus. What if God is unhappy with our praise? What if he is not pleased with the words we say? What if he takes away his love and his spirit from above? What if God is unhappy with your friends? What if God is unhappy with your praise. What if he is not pleased with the words we say? And what if he takes away? Thank you. 
Sister Gabrielle, if she can please pray. Jesus, I pray, oh God, that you may touch each and every one of us, that we may have a teachable heart. Oh God, that we may not just take this as another service, thinking that we will have the chance to come back and hear you say the same things again. Oh God, but let us understand that this could be our last chance to change. God, that we may give you what is due unto you, Jesus. Oh God, that we may truly consider, Jesus, the ways in which we have failed you. And put aside our pride. And truly, Jesus, seek you. So many of us are afraid of seeking you. We're afraid of what other persons will say because of how long we've been here. Of how we always look like we have it all together, Jesus. God, help us to recognize, oh God, that it is our, it is our salvation that is at risk. That we will have the own care for our souls to seek you because it is only you that can save us. Jesus, I pray, O oh God, that we may not forget, as we often do, the words that you have spoken, but that we may cling to you, because you are our only hope. God, I pray for those who have failed to recognize that they also have to seek you, the persons who are unaware that they too have struggles, that they too need to make a recommitment. Lord God, I pray that you may touch those persons, that you may reveal to them the ways in which they have failed you. And God, knowing it now, that we may strive towards you, that we may not come back being the same, that we may not come back the same and want the same word, but that we may come back with a difference, making improvement. Dear Jesus, I pray that you may help us to believe in you, that we may believe that you are God. Dear Jesus, I pray for your will, that you may walk with us, that you may guide us, Jesus, I pray that you may protect us from ourselves and our own foolish thoughts and behaviors. God, I pray you may be with us, that your will be done, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray.
Praise the Lord, we're going to do the benediction, and it's taken from 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10 and 11, and it reads thus, But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory, by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Thank you for coming out to Youth Sunday.